Back in a minute. Now what? Oh, but Debs, you haven't done what I said. I said you're supposed I know, to look but terrible. I didn't make my hair look all greasy enough. It would have looked horrible. But that's the old point. You're supposed to look horrible. You're supposed to be dying. I mean, you've got to have that red rash all over your... Where's the rat? It's in the bag. Ah, oh, look, I'm sorry, Debs. It's just not good enough. Lofty, leave it to me. But, Debbie, if you're supposed to have the black death, there's no point you're trying to look like a fashion model. Yeah, you? that's right. Look, come on. I'll sort her out. By the time I finish her, she'll look ill all right. Come on, Debbie. Right, um, now then, everybody. Uh, where's Tony? Lofty, I don't know where my dad's gone. Uh, and then, where's Debbie? All right, patience, Lofty. He'll be here, he'll be here. Uh, I'm going to give the old thing a miss. Now, I'm not a carnival type, really. Now, it's a quiet afternoon on the allotment, mate. I'm going to plant me broad beans, me peas, and maybe a second row of carrots. Uh, Pete, <laughs> you don't half look the right wallet. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. Right, what's the plan? Where do you want to stand? What's all this? Well, we're going to be one Roman short, I'm afraid, Lofty. Oh, it's from no. Dad. Sorry. Oh, where's he gone, then? I don't know, but he's getting right on my nerves at the moment. We've got to have a Roman. He comes right after me. So that Roman's gone a Roman. <laughs> Well, look, um, we, we just have to find someone else, Pete. Yeah. I just know who, an old fella, mate. I know what I say. I'm dead formed up. No, she's supposed to, Ethel. Well, I just hope I don't see Roy. That's why I'm terrible. Are you I don't want to be a Roman soldier. Let's get your powder, though. Let's get your powder, get your powder, I take part, I promise. But let me go as a Wolford Gardener. A Wolford Gardener, please. No, you can't be a Roman. No, 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 I'll go and collect me boots and spade, eh? There's your laurel wreath. There's a bunch of grapes. And there's your Spanish flip flops. Oh, no, not the flip flops. Anything better than the flip flops. Hold up. Everybody pin their life to I'm at Oh, God, I'm a little sorry. Hey, let's move it. Bye, Mum. You look after Martin. Yeah, Mum. Yeah. Yourself, eh? <laughs> Come on, sweetheart. 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 Come on, Soon be back in this room. There you go, darling. Oh, cheers, love. All right. You look a bit fed up with yourself today, if you don't mind me saying so. Well, I'm not so much fed up as jealous, I suppose. Oh, Deb say. No, no. Of that bloody policeman, PC plot. Hey? Do you know he's asked Debs to marry him? Do what? Yep. Then on one knee, the fool works. Blimey. She actually asked my advice, Ange, as if I had no feelings at all. I mean, she was getting mad at me a few months ago. I don't know, it's so ironic. 
EMI still paying for the instalments in that blasted ring, which, of course, got stolen. Oh, we're a right pair, aren't we? I mean, I still care about old Dick Turpin out there, despite what he's done. So here we are, both caring about people who don't care about us, eh? Stupid, isn't it? Don't know why we don't just clear off. What, together? That's a thought, Ange. Here, I might take you up on that. After all, we've got a lot in common, haven't we? Oh, we never would, though. No? Because no, we love them. That's why we're here. Is that why you took those pills, then? Don't worry, love. I only know because I work at the hospital, and nurses do gossip sometimes. Oh, my God. What you doing back here? Well, I fell off the back of a lorry, You're supposed I? to be on the blasted float. I didn't agree to be on the thing all day, you know. I went up Turpin Road and up the ice tree. And as I said, got to a sharp bend, I sort of fell off. No one noticed. Yeah, team spirit always was one of your best qualities, wasn't it? Thanks. Now I'm going to strip and something more comfortable. Yeah. Look, I didn't want anyone to find out about that. Hey, don't worry, love. I wouldn't dream of telling anybody. Thanks, Andy. You were lucky, though. Don't I know it. Are you all right now? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Except I feel so ashamed of myself. Nah. He's looking at you. You too, babe. I haven't made anything yet. Oh, you don't need to love me, do you? We've got all Martin's little things, drawers full of them. You know, I'm only doing this because I enjoy it. <coughs> Rolls it up, let's have a look. There. It's tiny. <laughs> oh, well, it'll be tiny too for the first few weeks. He? Could be a she, you know. Well, we'll know in six or seven weeks, won't we? You'll have a little playmate, won't you? <laughs> you know, all this talk about having it at home, it's not on you, now. Quite apart from us being overcrowded on medical grounds. Well, the clinic says everything's 100%. I'm fine, the baby's fine. Have you actually talked to them about where you're going to have it? Yeah, well, they say in the hospital, naturally. Well, that's where it'll have to be, Michelle, so stop being so silly. They wouldn't have it anywhere else, and not with Dr. Leg neither. And I'll tell you for why. One, because it's a first baby. And two, because you're only 16. Uh, two very good reasons. Don't see why. Because yeah. they want everything to be safe, as safe as safe yeah. can be. I'm not saying anything's going to go uh, wrong, because I don't believe it will. But we want you to have all the help you can. Not only for your sake, but for his and all. Or hers, as the case may be. All right, Gran, I see your point. It just seems such an uncomplicated way of doing things, though, having it here. <sighs> uncomplicated? Oh, birth in a sardine tin. All right, Gran, don't go on. Gran? Hmm? I talked to the baby's father about this. Oh, you did, did you? Mm. He said the same thing as you. Got to have it in the hospital. Oh, well, he has got some sense, then. <laughs> He's got plenty of sense. Oh, you still see him, then, do you? Gran, did I say that? I mean, how do you know I didn't ring him? I don't. <laughs> right, well, I didn't see him. I, I just contact him now and again. You're still fond of him, aren't you? <laughs> I can tell. Oh, please, don't start saying things like that, all right? All right. The thing is, it's stupid, really. I didn't care about him, not before. Just kind of liked him, you know? But now... Everything seems so hopeless. You are fond of it. Yeah. Look, Gran, please, I don't want to talk about this, all right? Just leave us alone. Yeah. I am very fond of him. I mean, I've come to realise it more and more. But it's no good now, because it's too late. Now, why don't you just wait till Dad gets back? I've got to have something to do, haven't I? If he goes out and leaves us in the middle of a crisis, I can't just sit here, can I? Yes, it wasn't his fault. He had to go out. Of course it was. Kelvin made him because of the carnival. Yeah, no, it just shows you how weak he is, doesn't it? Now, look, Cassie, your dad's a good man, but you better get used to this. He's weak and he's lazy. Oh, God. Don't believe this. I don't know what I'm doing. Just don't know what I'm doing. Hey, are, sweetheart. Oh, I'm really fed up. Jeez. Never mind. At least we've got one customer. <laughs> no, no, can't think why we opened up for. 20 salad rolls you did. Well, I suppose she might eat them all. Never mind. We might get some trade when the procession comes back down the square. At this rate, I could have gone minicab and I've taken part in a flipping carnival. It's no sign of anyone or anything. I'm sorry, Alan. I really thought the 
be masses of people. I thought it'd be a chance to earn a bit of extra money. Money? Money? Don't talk to me about money. We things are really desperate, Sue. Here, listen. Shush. I think they're coming back round. Come on. Come on.